Hey nest gardeners, I've been having problems with my hummingbird feeders and the ants are getting in it. And that'll deter those hummingbirds from feeding and plus it contaminates the water so bad. So I've been designing a little bit more natural ant moats. So I wanna show you some of these. If you're not familiar, the idea is you hook this to the top of your feeder, you fill it with water and the ants do not wanna come down into your sweet sugary water because they can't make it through the water moat. So that's the idea behind making them. You can find all different fancy kinds on the internet. So I've been doing some pretty cool ones. All you need is a paint can lid. So I did three of them here, three different ones, paint can lid, and I've been collecting sticks from out in my yard. So I feel like this is a cool kids project. And I like to use a stick that's easy to hollow out. So in these three, I've got sticks. Let me show you my sticks. Down here, I have elderberry and I have um, some walnut. I've been trying different ones to see which ones are hollow. I love ash trees, but they're pretty hard to find. But I'm finding the elderberry shrub is by far the best one. So that's the one I'm gonna be using here with you. You're gonna cut it to about six inches. So you need this little six inch stick. Let me just tell you another tip. I walked over to the forsythia over here and I grabbed the forsythia and look at this old forsythia stem. You can jam the, a ramrod right through the center of it. Can you see the hole in the end of it? So you study at home. Look at, this is a job for your kids. Go out and cut some twigs. Find some that have a hollow pith on the center of them. But the elderberry's got a really big pith in it. And you'll be able to take a hanger. I literally just took my hanger and cut the wire off of it. And I use it for my ramrod and I'll jam it through. And you can see the sawdust come out of it. See the sawdust shooting out as it knocks the pith out. I usually choose a stem that's got a little notch at the bottom because I want my paint can lid to be able to sit on top of that little node area or where there's a branch. You can see on some of my other ones, there's a side branch on here. And so I chose that so that the moat will sit on top of it. So you'll see on all three of them, there's kind of a branching there. This is the one I'm gonna use. Now, I gotta figure out, I gotta drill a hole in my paint can lid. So what I do is I just use my little drill measurer here and figure out, okay, there's my stick goes in that one. So I need a drill bit about that diameter. So there's my drill bit that fits in there. So I did pre-drill a little hole in here cause some of them crack on me. If you get a real flexible paint can lid, a flexible one, you won't find that it cracks. See how easy that was? Whammo. That's not the kid part. The kid part's collecting the sticks. Another thing you might want to do with your stick is let the kids peel it. This is a lot of fun at this time of the year. The, the bark will slip real well and you can peel it down to make it a, it's gonna, you're gonna watch it here. It'll shred when I push it through here. So let's go ahead and use this one. I'm gonna jam this through my paint lid and it's gonna sit on top of my little side branches. The next thing to do is make sure you ram out all the inside, which I pre-did before you got here. And then I put my string, I like using this camp string. It's nice and camouflage because I like this more natural look. And I tape it. You gotta tape it pretty tight, tight on there. So I like to use packing tape, a little bit of that. And that secures it pretty nice. Not every time will it stay stuck to my hanger ramrod. A lot of times it gets stuck inside my stick. So this takes some practice, but I'm gonna use this as my thread. I'm gonna thread this through. Oh, it came through. Make sure your string's about two or three feet long so you don't get it stuck. I pull it through, whammo. So now I'm gonna tear it off of my, I'm gonna cut it off of my hanger. So there, now one problem that I have is sometimes I find it, I'm not paying attention and it goes back through. So I like to cut some little pieces of twig and I feed, I feed my string through the twig. Mm. I wish I'd left, I wish I'd left it on that string, but I feed that on there so I don't lose it. So it doesn't fall back through. I'm going to tie that off just for a second. I don't want to. And same thing on my bottom. I'm going to put another little twig here. I'm going to feed this in just so I don't lose my string. If you find it doesn't work, just use, find that old ramrod again and jam it through there. Come on. 
come on, you're, you're going to be famous. You're on the movies. Go through. There it goes. Yeah, that handy hanger. So now that I've done these two pieces, actually, I've got it kind of, let me tie it off just so I don't lose my strings. So the next thing I'm worried about is, wow, what about the water and things? So I just bought some silicone glue and I'm gonna glop some glue in here and I'm gonna put some glue on the bottom. So in two places, I'll have some glue. I'm gonna put it right around the base here. I'm gonna blob it all around. And then I'm gonna push my cap down into it. Now, I don't like to see that blobby stuff, so watch what I do. I like to give it the little natural touch. I stick a little bit of mulch and soil on it. If I was using caulk, which I did on some of my other ones, I can't stand the look of that white caulk. So I do a little outdoor decorating here. See the white caulk on the other ones? I covered it with mulch too, to cover them up. So I put some of that glue down inside. Where'd it go? I'm gonna put some in here do the same thing. I can really gob it in here because you guys won't see it and nobody sees it. I'm just trying to make sure I get an adequate seal to hold my water for my ants. I'm going to twirl it a little bit. I'm going to twirl it. So I'm going to have to wait a day or so to let that dry, but essentially it's done. This top piece, I'm going to make a loop out of here because this is the part that's going to go over top of my bird feeder and and I use a big old hook at home I got a hook so you have to make that kind of large so that's the hook at that end on the bottom here I'm just going to tie off another little hook I'm going to have to put an S hook on the base here so the feeder can hang from it so I I just tie it I make a loop Oh, let me get in there. Okay. Got my little loop, my little S hook. So that'll be my bottom. Whoop. This will be my bottom. Cut off my extra string. And then I cut this piece off. So I got my bottom and my top. And voila! And I hang my feeder from. So there you go, natural gardeners. There's my homemade moat, and it's nice and natural looking. Woo! Have fun! Enjoy. I hope get the family involved. Find the sticks with the hollow stems and let them peel the bark. See you soon.